We live in a rapidly aging world. At the start of the 20th century, people could expect to live perhaps to 40 years of age in, in what are now, is now the developed world. Um, at the start of this century, that's almost doubled to 80 years of age. And if you were to read the newspaper or to look at television, you would think that was a problem. This is a crazy way of, uh, of looking at this dramatic change in our society. The way it's portrayed is that older people are a burden. Older people will cost us more. We will have to spend more on pensions. We'll have to spend more on health care. But think of it in another way. Older people are an amazing resource. They're a resource to their families, and that might be very informal in just terms of doing some babysitting or providing some advice from their own experiences to help guide their children. They're a resource to their community. They might volunteer in all sorts of ways. And they can remain a broader resource to society in, in, the, in the general and formal workforce. But think of the barriers that face people in terms of achieving those, those, those goals. Think of the, the, the barriers we put in front of them which force them to become a burden rather than to be a resource to us. And this, this is uh, about the, the physical and the social environment in which they live does it actually make the most of what older people offer to society? So today, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the physical aspects of the, of the world in which we live, which might make it easier for older people to participate. We did some research in uh, New York, and we looked at um, what were the characteristics of the neighbourhood in which people lived in terms of their risk of depression. And we found that if they lived in a rich neighbourhood, regardless of how much money they earned, it actually meant they were at less risk of developing depression. Now, why would that be? I think it's because there are more resources there. There may be parks where they can go. There's probably, it's a safer environment for them, so there's less threats. It's probably a, a more pleasant place for them to, to get around, and probably there are more uh, services like bus access, or, uh, and, and there's probably more shops, more places for them to go. So that's, that's in a, a rich place like New York. But think about those same principles in the place where you live. And that could be in, in, in a developed uh, country, or it may be in an emerging economy, or even in a very poor place. Think about what are the characteristics which make it easier for older people to get to the places where they want to go, and also help make those places accessible to them. So let me give you a few examples, a few, a few simple things which we can do to, to ensure that older people can remain more engaged. One is around transport. And a, an obvious uh, uh, option here is public transport. Um, first of all, is there affordable public transport which will take them from where they are, from probably where they live, to where they want to go? And is that affordable transport accessible physically? Is it, it, for an older person who may have developed uh, some physical limitations, is it a disabled access bus? Is there priority seating for older people? And do the bus drivers and the other passengers treat older people with respect and actually let them sit in the seating for older people rather than sit in it themselves? So these are very, very simple things that don't cost a lot of money that actually can make a big difference to an older person. Two things when we talk with older people come up all the time that, that, that might surprise you. Two things that limit their ability to go out. One is they find that they actually need somewhere to sit. For, for an older person who's becoming physically frail, it's very hard for them to stay on their feet and keep walking. So one of the things we could think about is providing park benches or street benches where they can, where they can take a brief rest. The other thing that they always raise as an issue is toilets access to toilets. Because for an older person, sometimes um, the, uh, the, there's um, a, a more urgent need to go to the toilet. And if there are no public toilets available, that will be a barrier. They will think, well, I can't go out because there'll be no place for me, uh, for me to use. Now, how, how can we provide toilets without spending a, an awful lot of money providing building new public toilets? Well, a lot of businesses um, already have toilets available for their employees uh, and sometimes for their customers. In New York, they thought about this issue and they have a program on creating age-friendly businesses. And they talk with those businesses about making those toilets accessible to older people too. 
they have a little sign in the window that says this is an age-friendly business. And that means an older person is more likely to enter the shop because they, they want to use the toilet. They know they're not going to be questioned about it. There's, no, there's not going to be any problem. But then they're in the shop. They learn to perhaps, uh, they get to know the, 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 the shop owner. Or they might bring their, uh, their daughter in while they're using the toilet and their daughter might start looking around the shop. Whatever way, it brings a potential new cost customer into the shop. So it's a win-win. It doesn't cost the shop anything, it doesn't cost society anything, but it provides an older person with the things that they need. Another thing that's important is not just access to transport, but also access to the, to the places where older people want to go. If there's a, a, a long row of stairs, obviously that's something which may be somewhat intimidating. So trying to design urban spaces so that older people who uh, may have uh, less functional capacity can, can get into public buildings or get into shopping malls, these are important things. And the, and the interesting thing about creating a city which provides those, those facilities for older people is those facilities are available for everyone. They make it easier for young children. They make it easier for women with, with children in prams. They make it easy for disabled people. Uh, everybody benefits. So this is not something that's just for older people, um, but it's a way of designing our cities that will enhance the resource which is now present in our population, but also provide a service for everybody.